One may also touch the parts of the Muharrem's body, which he is allowed to look at, on condition that there is no risk of lustful feelings stemming from it for each. A man may press the feet of his mother, but he can only press her thigh if it is covered means he may do so on her clothes. However, it is impermissible for him to touch her thigh without it being covered. One may also kiss the feet of his mother. It has been mentioned in the Hadith. One who kissed the feet of his mother, it is as if he kissed the doorpost of Jannah. To travel with your Maharim or to be alone in privacy with her, in other words, for both to be alone in a house where there is no one else is permissible on condition that there is no risk of lustful feelings stemming from this. The ruling regarding looking towards a strange woman is that it is permissible to look towards her face and her palms as the need for this arises like an occasion when one needs to testify in support of her or when opposing her or in a case where one needs to pass a judgment relating to her. If he does not see her, then what for will he testify that she has done a certain thing? When looking at her, the ruling is also the same, like on condition that there is no risk of lustful feelings stemming by looking. With the exception of this, there are also other times when one has to look at them. As many women come in and out of their homes, thus to totally avoid this, glancing at them is very difficult. Some ulama have mentioned that it is also permissible to look towards their feet. Even though it is permissible to look at the face and palms of a strange woman, touching her is impermissible. Even though there may be no risk of lustful feelings, reason being that looking is on the basis of necessity and due to balwai arm, but where arm refers to common dilemma, the avoidance of which is extremely difficult. There is no need to touch, hence to touch is haram. From this it can be deduced that to shake hands with them is impermissible. That is why Huzur wasallam would never hold the hands of females when taking bayat from them. Bayat refers to the oath of allegiance. But he used to take just the beard verbally. However, if she is extremely old where the situation of lustful feelings is no more existent, then there is no objection in shaking her hands. Similarly, if a man is extremely old and there is no risk of waywardness at all, then he too may shake hands. To look at a very small girl who is not mushtihat is allowed. Here the word look means wherever in this book we discuss touching or looking at a small child or minor etc. It must be noted that this refers to touching or looking at them with compassion. This does not refer to touching or looking with ill intention as to do so is an accursed act and totally forbidden. One who behaves in this atrocious manner with children is deserving of the fire of hell. And mushtihat means desirable. In other words, it refers to one who excites his passion. If a strange woman is employed at the home of anyone as a domestic servant or to prepare rotis, etc., as a cook, then in such an instance it is also permissible to look towards her wrists as she will raise her sleeves whilst working and in doing so her wrists will become visible and how will he be able to avoid this whereas she is in his home similarly to look towards her teeth etc is also permissible even though it is permissible to look towards the face of a strange woman if there is no risk of lustful feelings but this is an era of waywardness or corruption in this time, where do we find people like the pious people of the past? Hence, in this time, it will be cautioned against looking towards them, except in the case of witnesses, when they have to come before the Qadi, as this is to look at them due to necessity, there is also another circumstance pertaining to this. 
That is when a person intends to make nikah or marry that woman. In such a case, to look at her for the said reason is permissible. For it has been mentioned in the hadith that one should see the person that he intends to make nikah to, as this will be a means to an everlasting love. Similarly, a woman may see that man who has sent a proposal of marriage towards her, even if there is a risk of lustful feelings stemming from this, but the intention of both should be that they wish to act upon the hadith. <laughs>